we're headed north seven hours deep into the rainforest to a place where researchers are searching for answers on what could be the next pandemic. We arrive to find a pretty stunning scene. You've got this team of scientists in their white Tyvek suits, like aliens, marching through this green, lush landscape high above the canopies of the rainforest, trying to go to those places where the virus begins its journey and stop it even from beginning. What people have realized is that over the past, you know, 50, 60 years, there's been a steady increase in the number of diseases that are zoonotic, meaning they come from animals, here, you know, in Liberia, because there was a massive Ebola outbreak, um, and it was terrifying, terrifying for people. So there was a, been a real push to understand more about where these viruses are coming from. From someone who studies this, it is incredible to almost be standing in a place where some of these things have started or could have started. So you and your team are going inside a cave where Ebola was found. Is Ebola still in there? Is it still out here? I mean, probably. We found Ebola Zaire here, which is the main Ebola strain that causes the outbreaks all around the world. One of the worst outbreaks that the world has recently seen is Ebola. <laughs> Ebola causes hemorrhagic fever which means the body basically starts to liquefy from the inside out. Victims are highly contagious, even after death. The death rate can be as high as 90%. Luckily, the extreme symptoms of Ebola made it easier to track and contain. This happened across Central and Western Africa, and it began with a bat-borne pathogen. So the team's setting up what's called a harp trap, and it's specially made to catch bats. And it's kind of cool, it, it's good at catching a lot of bats in a space that's like we know they're gonna fly out of a specific area. Looks kind of like a harp, right? Mm -hmm. So aptly named. Jim Desmond and his team are collecting bats to put together this almost library of different pathogens and viruses, and then they can characterize which ones may or may not be of greatest risk to human health. 